okay welcome everybody here we are for the finale of the track here with two titans of the media measurement industry um we've got a peek into some new techniques around scaling cross-platform attribution uh please welcome to the stage lindsay Woodland from ph uh from phd phd from 605 as well as jess santoro evp of advanced tv and video at kident making sure this thing's on all right titan and then I had to make sure that uh, you got the EVP in there because I am not a PhD. <laughs> it's very, makes me very nervous. Um, I am uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having us, everybody. Um, I'm with my counterpart and partner, uh, Lindsay Woodland. My name is Jess Santoro. I am from Cadent. Lindsay is from 605. What we thought we'd do today is just give you a little top line on who we are as far as our companies, and then take you through a use case that we created together um, that has resulted in a case study that will share those details with you today. All right. Take it away, Lindsay. Great. That's my cue. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. So just to like a four second overview in case you haven't heard of 605. We're an independent um, measurement and attribution company. We do not buy or sell any media. So we mostly focus on attribution, which is why we're talking about cross-platform attribution today with Caden. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm from Cadent. We do buy and sell media, uh, which is why we are such good partners. Um, Cadent is an advanced TV platform. Uh, we call that platform Aperture. Within Aperture, we house a number of different tools that allow both the buy side and the sell side, um, enable them to design, execute, and manage cross-screen television campaigns with a little more efficiency and effectiveness. And so we'll illustrate a little bit of what um, we do together right now. Um, we uh, just wanted to kind of give you some context about who both of our companies work with. From the buy side perspective, Cadent really services um, the agencies and any respective clients. And from 605, so I've, we've put up some of our partners that we work with in our vendors, not our clients, our clients in general. We work with, you know, publishers, brands, agencies. But since we are a, you know, a tech company, we need to partner with a lot various um, outcome vendors, data spine vendors, various people who have you know, are at this conference. So it's a whole ecosystem. So, whoops, got to go back. Sorry, I'm a little itchy trigger finger here. Um, when it comes to the services that uh, Caden provides to our clients, like what, what really we have built as a tool set, we continue to build as a tool set, are different ways that we can help them navigate what has continued to become a very complex and um, difficult marketplace. Uh, as we sit here on the doorstep of the upfront, we are getting challenged by a lot of our clients to help them with a lot of the uh, things on the screen. So this isn't really just a cadent perspective. This is our reaction to our client's perspective. Um, obviously, the macroeconomic conditions continue to cause a lot of anxiety, and um, that makes budgets a little bit more fluid, and they come to market a little quicker. So we have to move quicker in order to plan those. Um, and then the biggest challenge, I think, that uh, our clients and we all face is that general dilution of impressions across so many different endpoints. And so um, you have this level of uncertainty, our clients, which puts a lot more pressure on accountability of our clients. And they know that those audiences are all over the place. So how do we design those tools and partner uh, with companies like 605 to make sure we can be accountable for the investments that our clients share with us? So um, I'm going to just set up the client that we work with, and then that's the easy part, and then I'll hand it over to Lindsay to take you through um, all the details. We had one of our clients, it is a big box retailer that focuses on a lot of home decor and DIY crafts. They came to us leading into the holiday season with uh, a good budget for them, not a budget that would they thought compete with some of their bigger rivals. And so they came to us with a very, very clear objective. Um, that is, how can we be more efficient in number one, driving awareness and getting scale out of this budget that we have? Uh, how do we more uh, target with this budget? And so rather than target, which they historically had done a female 25 to 54, how do we get a little bit more precise with that targeting and those females that are at home predominantly with children and enjoy DIY and crafting around the holiday season? And then how do they defend their existing loyal position? Um, while also taking share away from some of their competitors. And so it was a pretty clear cut objective about 
just help us navigate our spend across the television marketplace. That is linear cable, <coughs> linear broadcast, and then the OTT counterparts across all of those networks. And so our approach was relatively straightforward. It started with using our Aperture platform and designing that audience. So um, we have a data marketplace within our platform, about uh, 50 different data providers, nearly 100,000 different segments. We use that to curate a specific strategic target audience. Once we create that strategic target audience, we um, match it up against all of that inventory that we aggregate, linear cable, linear broadcast, and all the OTT counterparts. We identify on the linear side, uh, the group, anybody that was listening to the group before us, that kind of one to many, uh, where are the highest concentrations from a day part network intersection of those audiences? And then on the connected TV side, how do we target directly uh, and deterministically into those households? The second part of that was then matching it against all that inventory. And then that's where our uh, partners at 605 come into play. Then how do we design a campaign that is going to be accountable for that investment? So with that, I'll hand it over to Lindsay to take you through some of the results. Excellent. So I'm going to go through just a couple high-level results of what we found for this case study. In general, this is just one case study of many, and I'll get into the methodology after. But one thing we wanted to note about um, right away is when you're looking at cross-platform measurement, the main thing you want to see is, is it working? Which platforms are working? Various platforms might cater to different audiences in a different way. So as a high-level our data feeds into Cadence Aperture platform, and this is the reporting tool that they then send to their clients and just show the kind of the story with the data, right? So the screenshots here are from that reporting tool, and we just highlighted a few. So you can see like the first section, I can't point, this pointer doesn't work, so sorry. Um, but you start to see the incremental lift when you add in more platforms, which is kind of true to what you would think, right? The more platforms you add, the higher the lift becomes, which is great. This is exactly what's happening. It also proves, you know, value for this home decor retailer, like Cadence doing what they should be. Advertising, trying to reach people on multiple platforms, not just broadcast and CTV even, but also layering in cable provided even a higher lift. We also dive into optimal frequency and latency analysis. So trying to get at what's the um, best distribution of those ads to the viewers we see that here, you know, the optimal frequency was hitting people with about four impressions across those platforms. And within about a week of their first impression, they would convert. So that would give Caden a better idea of how they might want to distribute those ads moving forward in order to get the highest return. And then when we're talking about cross-platform, you want to know like unique reach. So, like it's been talked about a lot at this conference, right? We're hitting different audiences. And we start to see that not only just linear to digital, but broadcast to cable, there is quite a big difference. So in this Venn diagram, you start to see this is the reach of every combination of households for this platform. You're hitting very unique audiences on cable only, broadcast only, CTV only, and then small groups within the intersection. So there are very distinctive populations. So it's important to reach people on all three areas. And with that, you want to know, let's look into these um, unique population. So here is just a deeper dive into those unique groups. And we can see if you look at the like bottom left donut graph, what it's going to show you is breaking out the CTV population into heavy, medium and light consumers of TV, right? So in general, you think, okay, CTV is going to reach a younger audience is what, you know, most of the analysis, but what is it? Is it reaching a different viewing population? And this is showing it is. So by advertising on CTV, um, Cadent was able to get a larger population of light and media, medium TV viewers, but they're also still getting quite a large portion of heavy viewers. So there are a number of CTV viewers who are also heavy linear broadcast cable viewers. So it's, it's a nice kind of parody in the CTV, whereas if you look at the top two, they're much smaller, but you're noticing that the light viewers are pretty much absent. So on cable and broadcast, they're not reaching light viewers at all. So they needed the CTV to be layered in. Okay. And in the end, the great number that everybody wants to see is the return on ad spend. So this campaign was highly successful, giving five, uh, $5 on return on ad spend for every $1 spent, which is great news for the client. Now, so this is kind of a recap of some of the findings we found. In general, we partner with Cadent to um, perform a number of cross-platform studies. And so I kind of want to get into some of the methodology and then how we scaled that. So when we have worked with Cadent in the past, like, I don't know how many years we've worked together. Oh, wow. While um, we were working in the linear space only together, measuring 
linear linear campaign after linear campaign. And then when we moved to the cross-platform space, there's a few difficulties that came. So like Jess mentioned, I don't know how familiar you are with Cadent, but they're like a local aggregator of data, right? So they buy up local inventory to the national market. So that's going to be conceptually national as a buy, but like on the back end, if you're thinking of the data science, the weighting methodology becomes a little bit more tricky. And then when you layer that in with weighting, there's an extra layer of the CTV universe to throw in there. So just enhancing our processes is something we had to do. So in a few ways, we've made there our process scalable. So one of them is just moving alone from linear to cross-platform. We had to up improve our code processes. So, you know, allowing for the CTV data to come in, but also the ingestion of the data. So right now we have potentially like multiple projects every week coming in. And in order to house that, we've improved from like very simple things like uh, process requests. So Cadent has campaign coming in and now it's an automated kickoff of the project. So they'll submit into a portal we have. Here's an incoming project that kicks off the analysis to request data from our vendor. So I mentioned our different data vendors. We work with any first third-party outcome vendor because all this campaign was based on geolocation outcome data. We've also worked with Pixel, you know, transaction sales data. So we need a way to automatically get the data from our vendors and get the data from clients. So having an automated process there to kick it off, ingest the data, run the EDA processes, kick off the attribution solution and pop that back to Caden is pretty key. And then on Caden's side, they've also built the infrastructure that they now ingest our automated reports straight into their Aperture tool. So we've mitigate, reduced a lot of manual hours that we have had in the years past painstaking hours that, you know, everybody wants to get rid of and we're now there. So it's a much smoother process. We were at, we moved from weeks to days, days to hours in a lot of these areas. So we're pretty happy with the where we've scaled so far, which works perfectly for the upfront season as they're selling more and more right now. Um, so let me get into just a little bit of the cross-platform methodology, which some of you, you know, might be interested in. So overall, we use um, at 605, we use a causal fractional multi-touch attribution solution, which is a lot of words. Um, so I will kind of step through in a couple of ways. So here's a really big picture. Um, I'll step through each of the components. But basically for this project with working with Cadent, there's a lot of data that feeds into this system, right? So we have, we broke out Cadence broadcast schedule, cable schedule. That's one component. But there's also a bunch of other ads, like this home decor retailers advertising elsewhere. They're not only advertising on Cadence. Additionally, they have competitors. Competitors are advertising everywhere. These kinds of things heavily influence the impact of, you know, the campaign. If somebody sees, you know, 100 ads from their competitor against somebody who doesn't see any competitor, that's a completely different um, uh, likelihood that they're going to purchase that you know, store A. So we're ingesting, can, I don't know if you can read that. These screens are really far away. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but so we ingest the impressions data, basically the ad schedules from Cadent, our own tunings data that comes in as our exposure data. We layer that into a matching component. So uh, matching is ensuring that our testing control groups are aligned. I'll get into a little more detail across a myriad of attributes. And we have to layer in outcome data. For this one, it was geolocation data. Um, we've also used, like I mentioned, pixel um, sales data. And then we layer in a multi-touch attribution solution, which isn't kind of the typical multi-touch attribution solution that you might be thinking about at a high level across different um, campaign strategies. It's breaking down the effects of the campaign at the creative level, the duration level, day part by duration, by platform, any kind of ad spot combination you want. We're using a similar kind of strategy to do that. So that way we can get very granular results. So with that in mind, um, I'll break, go through a couple of the components with you. So I mentioned the weighting. The weighting for cross-platform is a little bit different than just like digital only, linear only, national, any kind of one platform siloed attribution study. Because here you're going to have each platform has its own biases, right? So we're marrying with outcome data. So the geolocation data, they have their own footprint. We have our linear data has its own footprint. CTV has its own data. And then layer and cadence, local to national aggregate. So it's not fully national, but like mostly national. So you need to ensure that your weighting is accounting for the biases and the intricacies between those. So we use like a multi-step weighting process to ensure that at the end of the day, we're not, we're removing as much bias as possible without, you know, introducing any new um, issues in the data. Oh, gosh. There's a CTV in that. It's in there. 
Oh, the blue, the Cadent Digital is the CTV. Yeah, just generic. <laughs> Great. Okay, so then once we have the weighting, that's kind of a big component of the attribution. You also need to do matching. So perhaps a lot of you are familiar with matching, but in general, you want to compare any campaign with like the basis of an experimental design, right? Compared to lookalike groups on every aspect except the exposure to the campaign. But matching and cross-platform can become a little bit more tricky because you have the access and the availability to the platforms to also bring into place. So we're now matching on demographics, psychographics, past viewing behavior, propensity to go to these stores, these locations, you know, but also are they available to be reached within these markets? Are, do they have access to linear TV? Do they have access to, you know, CTV? So in general, matching is going to ensure that the lift we get at the end of the day is causal. We can add the significance related to it and we can understand, you know, is that repeatable moving forward? But that's a pretty key component. Um, and lastly is our multi-touch attribution of the really long title that I gave our solution. Um, this is the third component. So here what we want to do is um, we break out the lift across, like I showed you on the case study, we had various platform breakouts. We also can provide the creatives. So, okay, maybe creative A drove a 10% lift, creative B drove like a 5% lift. That's important to know. But also it's important to know creative A drove a 10% lift on target A. Maybe it was most successful there, but on target B, it was unsuccessful. So being able to get the granularity of any audience group you want by any um, impression type. So what we do here is we basically, for any household, we look at the impressions that lead up to, um, I'm sorry, the impressions that lead up to the conversion. And then we're going to apply a weight at all the individual household impressions. And the weight's defined by a certain model. So I've up here, I've listed the nice rainbow graph. Um, but to the right are some examples of industry standards for what you might um, employ for a multi-touch attribution solution, right? There's the standard first touch, last touch. If you're not familiar, you attribute all your weight to those. And then there's various ones of fractional decomposition across the um, impressions. So linear touch is like proportional. Um, Markov is more sequential. Shapley is more an aggregated combination. So these are more general ones. What we do is we've researched all of these. We've come through and figured out what is the best one for us. We've used sort of an ensemble approach of a few different model types. And the way we validated this is over hundred, hundreds of studies, but they're bas basically we want stability and consistency, right? Because with any of these, if you were to change the campaign window, change the outcome, if your weights towards any type of creative day part are varying heavily, then that gives you less reliability in what you're doing. So stability is key. So that's how we came through with our uh, attribution, multi-touch attribution component of this solution. Um, so that's it on methodology. I'm pacing well, I'm looking at my clock here. So next steps, what we wanna do next. So what we showed you is kind of the, our, the first case study of our cross-platform um, scaled promote our scaled attribution solution together with Cadent. We have many more coming in through the pipeline, but I guess the key takeaways I want to hit on are obviously cross-platform is important. Everybody in this room knows it, but making sure that you're measuring your attribution across all of them at the same time instead of siloing is pretty key, as well as reach you reach completely different audiences. So targeting effectively. So you don't need one targeting strategy across your whole campaign by. You might want to target CTV, target your broadcast, target your cable in different ways. And I think that's something that Cadence is very good at. So I'll let Jess take some. Yeah. And just building off of what Lindsay said, I think that from our perspective, having a partner like this that allows us to once again, be accountable for the investment that gets trusted with us. Um, our first kind of proof point of this is that you do need that combination because impressions have been so diluted across so many different endpoints and, and the viewing behavior is so fractured that having broadcast linear broadcast, having linear cable, and then the counterparts of connected TV is really, really critical to continue to try to um, generate the reach goals that most brands need, especially a cluttered holiday season with a retailer, a lot of retailer ads uh, taking place leading up to the holidays. Um, they had to make sure they were going as wide as possible with the budget that they had. And, um, I, and I, I'll echo the strategic audience. Um, you know, Linear television is still a one-to-many but it's just about making sure the many that that spot reaches is as concentrated as possible against the true consumer target. And so um, it comes back again to that 
aggregation of supply to give broad range across the marketplace, not be confined by a particular medium or defined by a particular uh, media portfolio. Uh, it's important that you know Cadence sits above all of the networks, 90 plus networks on cable and every network on on uh, on broadcast. And so um, having that range and then having the accountability, we've really used this case study to help clients get more comfortable. Sometimes um, I think it's many of us probably get very frustrated that there's still these siloed budgets of linear budget or GRP budget, and then a digital budget. And um, the reality is it's not really the way that the consumers work. And this is pushing us with some data to help clients get over the hump of kind of trusting that cross-platform distribution can be measured and is valuable. All right, that's all the time we have. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, I'm sure you can find our friends here in the hallway. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference.